So Elevate, um, Elevate is an industrial IoT uh, startup that's in Seattle. Um, we are primarily working on connecting industrial mobile equipment, uh, primarily around like telematics. Uh, we incubated inside of a company called Western Integrated Technologies. It's down here in Kent, Washington. Um, their you know, big claim to fame is basically integration and distribution of a bunch of different hardware parts that go into different machines like a street sweeper, a log stacker, uh, forklifts that are in the ports over here, uh, tugs that pull the airplanes, uh, anything that is an industrial machine that is around the area, we basically are looking at connecting. And so one of the big things with Western Integrated Technology that makes us very different when we partner with them is that we're not just a software company, we bring the entire package uh, of industrial machines, of electro electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, people that know how to program controllers, and then we're able to actually connect all of them and send them out to the cloud. Um, we work with different distributors across the US, uh, not just Western Integrated Technologies, and we're really looking at basically getting into their entire customer base to connect their entire you know, ecosystem. When people think about IoT, uh, you know, I think people typically think, like, I'm going to connect my device, I'm going to connect my smart home, uh, and I think I was talking to somebody about like a washer dryer and a water leaker. Um, you know, we do connect industrial machines and we get machine data out of it, uh, but the biggest thing that we do as well is connecting the entire ecosystem of the entire distribution channel. And so we work with a bunch of distributors. Those distributors have a tremendous amount of OEMs, thousands and thousands of OEMs that are out there. They make a ton of these different machines. Those OEMs have zero idea how to freaking put together an IoT platform, an IoT solution. Those OEMs, they sell them to dealers, just like we go to a Honda dealership or a Toyota dealership and buy our cars. They sell them to dealers. Those dealers are leasing out their machines to different operators. And it's really important not to just to connect the machine, but being able to connect from where the machine started, from the actual parts inside of it, all the way down to who's actually driving it, when were they driving it, and being able to give that Carfax type of thing back to the actual OEM, back to the distributor of the parts, back to the suppliers, and then ultimately back to us. Um, so going into some of the technology that we use, uh, so what you see here is actually a demo kit that we put together. Um, is there like a light thing? Um, but in the middle uh, is our gateway. Uh, is it the green thing? Okay. Oh, yeah. So uh, basically the middle thing is the gateway that actually sits on all these industrial machines. Uh, those connect to the actual controllers uh, on the physical uh, industrial machines that we have out there. Those connect. Uh, these all have a build root Linux uh, OS on it uh, that we run a bunch of applications uh, running in C++ or Go, uh, a bunch of different applications that run on it. Uh, on the top right, this is the antenna. This is typically on top of the cab um, so that you're able to actually send the data out over cellular. Uh, so we support 2G, 3G, 4G, um, you know, at some point 5G, all carriers, you know, Verizon and AT&T. Well, not all, I guess. <laughs> um, the HMI, there's an HMI screen inside. Uh, not necessarily needed, but for a demo case, it's very nice to show. It shows the type of sensors that are in there. Uh, allows us to show uh, the operator what could they actually see inside of a cab when they were actually operating the machine itself. Um, and so the beauty of what we do, you know, and how we connect this, a lot of the times people under, you know, like how do you actually get, you know, devices connected? How do you connect them? Uh, a lot of the times people skip that whole step and, and then they're like, we get the data and we do data science, we do predictive analytics, we do AI. Uh, but before you can do all of that, you need to actually easily connect all of this. Uh, and what makes us, you know, in Elevate, tremendous, oh, I got to get going. We connect a bunch of different ones, and no coding is required for our distributors or OEMs. Um, the way we do it is we connect basically talking over CAN bus and J1939. Uh, we have a configuration file that's downloaded from the uh, internet, you know, from our platform, and then we send up compressed and batch data points to be able to make sure that uh, we actually keep those cellular costs very low for our customers that have hundreds of different assets that are out there. Um, we do a lot of different ways of updating controller software that's on the actual machine itself, so customers don't necessarily even need to go out into the field anymore, connect their USB or their USB uh, to their laptops and update it. Uh, we can actually connect it over the internet and upgrade all of those uh, different controller softwares that are out there. We have a bunch of different types of features that are in our, you know, our platform as well. Uh, that give you different dashboards, mobile alerts, 
uh, configurations, asset models, and I can go through this. Uh, we use Azure IoT Hub as primarily our cloud platform provider. Um, we use a lot of Azure IoT, a lot of Event Hub, uh, a lot of serverless around functions, uh, and then primarily around Cosmos DB for our time series database. Uh, a lot of the data that we're coming in is binary, so a lot of the stuff we have to do is transform that data prior to sending it and, and, and actually storing it in JSON. Um, and then we're able to actually scale out to you know, thousands and thousands of devices by basically building out more and more pipelines that scale up and down automatically. Uh, you know, just looking at data formats, um, it's not like your typical JSON that says temperature or oil pressure or anything like that. Uh, it's in this cryptic form oops, uh, that basically allows us to keep the footprint as small as possible so those data bills for the, our customers are very low. Uh, and it's super important. Uh, and we use basically Kubernetes for all of our Docker containers. Uh, everything we do is deploying off of that. Uh, Azure has a great, you know, a great, a great platform for basically using AKS, so Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, so we use a lot of that, and we use Nginx for a lot of our proxying and stuff. Uh, why did we choose, I think people always ask, why did we choose Azure? Uh, Azure loves the enterprise. Uh, every single customer, if you talk to them uh, in the medium size to enterprise size, they all love Microsoft. They have Microsoft partnerships. Uh, it's making it very easy for us to get into the door and, and start talking. Azure IoT and everything they do in Microsoft right now is all about industrial factories, predictive maintenance. They have a heavy emphasis uh, on in the industrial world, especially in IoT. Uh, and we're taking advantage of a lot of different failed projects that people have tried uh, around Azure already uh, and plugging our software in uh, and basically starting to collect all of that data for us. Uh, you know, where we're at today, like I was saying, is really big on just connecting. Um, and that's like the first step. Uh, and as we start to connect and we start to collect all that data, people are going to ask, ask, like, what do I do with it? Um, and that's where smart warranties come into play. Who are the people that are destroying my machines? Who are the people that are good citizens? I should give them discounts or I should actually charge them more uh, based off of the usage that they're doing. Uh, and then how do we actually make sure that when they're doing, uh, you know, maintenance or uh, replacements of oil filters, that they're doing it in a smart way? Uh, and in a way that this machine isn't getting damaged by long-term, you know, not oil changing and stuff. Um, okay, now I am done. So find me afterwards. I can talk more in depth about it. Uh, I tried to quickly run through that. Thank you very much. Um, so any questions? I guess I can open it up. <sighs> I ran through that real quick. No questions. Nobody, under nobody understood. Say that again? Sorry. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that we do is we just take advantage of Azure IoT. Uh, so one of the big things that Azure IoT gives is, you know, we basically provision, uh, basically open a cell certificate that gets uploaded, a self-signed certificate into Azure IoT Hub. Uh, that gets returned to the user, uh, and that user's uploading it into the gateway. Uh, so there's that trust between those two. Um, but yeah. Cool. Okay, well, if you don't want to ask me here, you can always ask me later uh, and find me later. Uh, a lot of it is in the Midwest. Um, Tremend oh, sorry, yeah. So he was asking, uh, wh where are our largest opportunities? Where do we find the most customers? Um, and where do we focus a lot of our time in? Uh, a lot of our focus is in the Midwest. Uh, there's a lot of industrial OEMs and distributors that are out there. Uh, our largest customer is out in uh, Cleveland and Chicago. Uh, and they're a big you know, distributor of different parts that they do. Uh, so a lot of that is uh, around you know, the Midwest. And then obviously we have Western Integrated Technologies as one of our partners. Um, that we work with and we incubate it in. Uh, so they do a lot of the Pacific Northwest, uh, so we do that as well. So what you're saying is the big farms over there help you work out what's working. The slightly smaller farms in this region are still probably trying to find all the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so I quickly ran through that. So, uh, so, we, uh, so a lot of the industrial mobile equipment that's out there today uh, is primarily uh, talking over CAN bus. So since the 80s, they've standardized on uh, CAN bus. 
Uh, and so basically on top of CAN bus, there's a protocol called J1939. Uh, and J1939 basically gives you a nice, easy way of translating CAN bus messages inside of it. Uh, and so we use J1939 to basically listen for all the different types of data. Uh, so there's like different identifier numbers uh, that tell you like what is, uh, you know, oil temperature versus an engine, RPMs versus, you know, sp speedometer or odometer or anything like that. Um, and so it depends on what's uh, uh, basically hooked up to that controller, uh, and then you listen uh, on the CAN bus for that. Yes, <laughs> I look it over here. <laughs> yeah, so I guess yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. One more question. That's a great question. Um, you know, right now, uh, you know, some of the things that we do, uh, we do offer our SaaS um, offering. Uh, that's primarily focused on small to medium uh, kind of distributors and OEMs. Uh, but when we work with the larger uh, in enterprise customers, a lot of them are asking for their own, uh, you know, basically their own Azure uh, infrastructure uh, uh, Elevate instance running in their subscription. Uh, and that's one of the big things that uh, we do for a lot of our larger customers that want to own the data in case of, you know, again, a startup failing. They don't want to basically be tied to stuff like that. Uh, and so we offer those abilities to be able to deploy uh, our entire stack uh, into an Azure environment that's in the customer subscription. Um, and then we're definitely talking about like type of bring your own database type of models um, where, you know, again, data in terms of IoT is, uh, you know, primarily the big problem where people don't want, you know, me and, and Elevate to own the data. They want to own the data behind their, you know, their firewall, their subscription. Uh, and so being able to actually tier all that data to uh, a customer's database would be something that we would look at doing as well. Absolutely. Yes. So all of them, what latest, how do you guys keep from We can talk offline. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a yeah, you guys can that talk after we just, answer. we have to keep it going. But that's why they got five minutes. You can see the faces, and you can go deeper after. So thank you. Thank you, Jeb.